Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Just lift your hands up in the building. Lift your hands up in the building. The presence of the Lord is in this place. His glory is in this house. Just want us to just take this moment and just bask a little bit. Thank you, God. Come on, just worship him for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. Something happens when we call your name. Jesus. Jesus. Something happens when we call your name, Jesus, Jesus, something happens when we call your name. sing it. Something happens when we call your name. Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Jesus. Come on, sing it out. Jesus. Something happens when we call your name. Everybody say, Jesus. Oh, come on and call his name. Jesus. Something happens. Something happens when we call your name. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, come on, let's take it up. Everybody lift your hands up in the air. Come on, everybody, everybody. Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Something happens when we call your name. Jesus. 
Take your seats. Jesus, something happens when we 
in the presence of the Lord anything can happen in the presence of the Lord anything can happen in the presence of the Lord Anything can happen in the presence of the Lord. Anything can happen. He can do anything with faith. He can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. He can do anything. He can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. He can do He can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. He can do Somebody just give him a wave offering in the building tonight. We honor the Lord for another opportunity to be coming into your homes tonight. And tonight, this word that God has given me, I have such an awesome responsibility for those of you that are listening worldwide. And I have been carrying this word and, and I cannot rush what I am commissioned to do by the Lord. And when we begin to see the times and understand that the very moment that I'm standing in this building is prophetic and it is the prophetic timing of the Lord for me to be here. And when I tried to be here on last Monday, and there was a storm 
in the city. The Lord called it the perfect stone. The perfect stone. And sometimes we don't recognize that chaos can sometimes be our friend. And it can become our friend because it allows us to operate in the timing of God that we would have normally missed. And sometimes when the Lord feels or see that we are about to miss him and we are about to miss his timing, the Lord will intervene and I give God glory for that. I would like for you tonight to turn with me, to turn with me to the book of Songs of Solomon, please. Song of Solomon. And we're going to be reading there because I have this mandate to speak what God has given me concerning us today, where we stand, where we sit. The Song of Solomon, the fifth chapter and the second verse. The fifth chapter and the second verse. The fifth chapter and the second verse. We're looking at a portion of a chapter, and this portion of the chapter speaks of the dynamics of where the church lies nationwide. In my right ear, it's not coming through where the church lies nationwide. And it reads as follow. I went to sleep, but my heart stayed awake. I dreamed that I heard the voice of my beloved as he knocked at the door of my mother's cottage open to me my sister my love my dove my spotless one he said for I am wet with the heavy night dew my hair is covered with it. I want to try to bring out the point so that we can understand the clarity of what God is giving us. When he speak to us from this passage and it says, I dreamed that I heard the voice of my beloved as he knocked at the door of my mother's cottage open to me, my sister my love, my dove, my spotless one. One of the reasons why God refers to us in the manner of my sister, my dove, my love, my spotless one. Because the relationship that God is speaking of as it relates to us, he's not talking about the kind of love or coming from a heart place like a relationship with a man or a woman. That is what you call uh, arousal love. In other words, that kind of love is motivated by situations and circumstances and uh, cars and houses and things that you don't do. So then if you are offended by your love, then you feel like I don't love you anymore. And if you are... Uh, if you are caressed or you are given gifts by your love, then you feel like, you know, I'm in love again. The Lord doesn't want to trust what he is speaking to us to that kind of love. He's talking to the um, emotive heart. Emotive heart is the heart that is planted deep within us that has nothing to do with outer stimulation. 
It is the heart that we were given from the throne of God. And in that heart, that heart has the ability, man of God, to keep coming after God. And that's the reason why people don't understand why they can go through all kinds of changes, but they keep ending up in church because uh, and some people don't even go to church, but they can be riding down the street and all of a sudden the tears will start flowing and they'll start feeling like, Lord, I thank you. And they know themselves that they've been far away from God and they don't even understand where that came from. Why am I giving God praise? Why am I giving God glory when I know that the Lord is far from me? And that is because the emotive heart will always pant after God. It will always be the part of your heart that will pant after God without any outside stimulation. In other words, my outside stimulation is leading me to the left, but my emotive heart that is connected to God is still making me come after God, even though in my psychological mind, I'm not ready to yield to God, but this heart is so powerfully connected to God that it overrides my natural desire. And that's why we end up feeling guilty when we do things wrong because the emotive heart is trying to tell us, it's trying to give us a message that you were conceived this way. You were born and shaped in iniquity, but you were not conceived in this manner. I'm not in my conception. I was not in this manner. I wasn't conceived like this. So the Lord said, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to the part of your heart that you think I need to arouse by buying you something or doing something for you tangibly. I'm talking to the part of your heart that's going to usher you into the kingdom. My God, I'm talking to the part of your heart that's going to allow you to stand before God in judgment. Are y'all hearing what God is saying today? I'm talking to that part of your heart. And I'm concerned about that part. So I'm not knocking on your fleshly heart. I'm not knocking on your heart that because the Lord paid my light bill, he's just so good to me. I'm not knocking on that heart. I'm not knocking on the heart that, you know what, I couldn't get no car and my credit was bad and God did it for me. I'm not knocking on that heart. I'm knocking on the heart as to the reason why I brought you into the earth realm. I'm knocking on the heart that has an assignment in it from God. I'm knocking on the heart that, oh y'all, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm knocking on the heart that, that, that watch this, that has purpose in it. That is the reason why the enemy cannot kill you because that heart has has purpose in it. Come on, somebody. It has purpose. Touch somebody and say, my heart has purpose. My heart has purpose. My heart has purpose. My heart has purpose. My God, I feel that. Let me slow down. My heart has purpose. I got purpose in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Doesn't matter what you do, God gonna come after what he put in you. That's why he said, once you are in my hand, no demon in hell can pluck you out of my hand. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about your heart that smoke. I'm not talking about your heart that drink. I'm not talking about your heart that leave you astray. I'm talking about the inner heart that makes you keep coming back to God. Oh, somebody said, I gotta keep coming back. I got to keep coming back. I was conceived this way. I'm going to get to that point. I was conceived this way. Uh, I was born and shaped in iniquity, but I was conceived this way. Let me bring some facts to you right quick. Uh -huh. He said, um, I want you to ask your neighbor, uh, am I asleep? Am I asleep? Am I asleep? I want to give you some facts tonight as to why I know that you were, you were born, you were conceived this way, but you were born and shaped in iniquity. You were born and shaped in iniquity. It says here, after doing some study, I want you to hear this, that if you back this process up of your conception, you will end up Back at the first day that the blood spot entered into your mother's womb. And I want us to understand why the enemy hates us so much. Yo, Jesus. Because in conception, we belong to God. God, I belong to God. I want to give you facts when, 
Exodus, the 12th chapter, the 6th verse, it says, watch this, let's go through the process. Let's go through the process of your birthing. It says, on the 14th day of the first month of, on the 14th day of the first month, the egg appears. On the 14th, on the 14th day of the first month, the egg appears. Now you got to give me time to really lay this foundation because I'm not, I'm not trying to hype us tonight. I'm trying to help us to understand what God is doing in our lives and why the enemy cannot have a foothold in your life. God, I wish I had somebody to say something right there. Why he cannot have a foothold in your life. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you did not have the power to rebuke him, he still don't have a foothold in your life. Somebody better say something in here. You better know that God is in control. He has always been in control. He always will be in control. Are you hearing me? That means all things work together for the God to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose, which means everything that has happened to you, it's happening because the emotive heart is drawing you into your divine purpose. Somebody say, I'm on my way into my divine purpose. I just wish I had somebody to shout that. I'm on my way into my divine purpose. Into my divine purpose. So then, people of God, look at this. That on the 14th day of the first month, the egg appears, which is considered the Passover date. Are you hearing me? According to Exodus, the 12th chapter in the 6th verse. I'm going to show you how you are divinely connected to the seven feasts of God. How you are divinely connected, man of God. Before you were ever born into the world, you were divinely connected to the seven feasts of God. It says here that the egg must fertilize within 24 hours or it will pass on. Watch this. 24 hours after Passover, according to Exodus, the 12th chapter, and the 17th verse is, watch this, is the feast of the unleavened bread. Are you hearing me? So all the way back in your conception, when you were just 24 hours old, you were already connected to the feast of the unleavened bread. Are you hearing me? In other words, holiness was already being birthed in you as a baby. That's why it explains why John the Baptist received the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Because all of us in the mother's womb is connected to a divine purpose that come from heaven. Somebody better give God a shout in here. Oh my God, let me calm down. Let me calm down. It said, which is the feast of the unleavened bread. Now watch this. Watch this. Within two to six days after the egg fertilizes. Watch this. Watch this. After the egg fertilizes, the fertilized egg, watch it, attaches itself to the wall of the womb and begin to grow. This is the feast of the first fruits. According to Leviticus 23 and 10. Y'all got to hear this. This is the feast of the first fruit. Watch this. Which means this is the reason why you come into the world wanting to give. Because you're automatically connected to the first fruit. This is the reason why you got to bear fruit. I just said something right there. This is the reason why the devil can't keep the believer in poverty. This is the reason why that the blessings of God is swinging over your head. And all you got to do is reach up and pull it down. Because it's already in you. At the time of conception, you already have the ability to produce. Tell somebody, I'm about to produce. I'm about to produce. I'm about to produce. He's talking to somebody at home. <laughs> oh, by say I say he talking to somebody at home. Between the second and the sixth day of your conception, you were already likened unto the first fruit of God. Oh my God. Good Lord have mercy. Then it says, watch this. At 50 days, the embryo shows arms and hands and legs and fingers and feet and toes and a heart 
and eyes, etc. Watch this. Watch this. Around the 50th day, the embryo takes on the form of a human being. 50 days after Passover, it's Pentecost. Are y'all hearing what God is saying? Are you hearing what God has said? You already connected with the power of the Holy Ghost. 50 days after you conceived in your mother's womb. Y'all, that's the reason why you come into the world yearning God. That's the reason why you can't help yourself. Even when you don't want to pray, something in you will just start praying. Oh, y'all, even when you ain't ready to come back to God, something in you keeps getting convicted. Are you hearing me? You ain't never been saved. Ah, before you even confess your sin, something in you begin to come after God and you automatically can feel the conviction of God because you already been connected to God. Who am I talking to? Tell somebody I'm already connected. Tell somebody I'm already connected. Somebody need to give him a praise right there for real. Somebody need to give him a praise right there for real. I'm already connected. I'm already connected. I'm already connected. I'm already, I'm already connected. My God, my God, my God, my God. Watch this, people. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. So then the embryo at seven months, at seven months, on the first day of the seventh month, the baby's hearing is developed. For the first time, it can hear and distinguish sound outside the womb, which is the feast of the trumpets. Now let me tell you why this is important. The baby for the first time can hear sound outside of the womb. I want you to hear this. The baby for the first time can hear sound outside of the womb. In other words, my hearing is developed from a deep place. Come on, somebody. It's developed from an eternal place. In other words, that's why I'm able to hear God when he calls me. Because my hearing is developed from a deep place. Come on. I didn't just start hearing when I came into the world. I told y'all I started hearing before I was even birthed into the world. Are you hearing this? Tell somebody I thank God I can hear. I thank God I can hear. Somebody say, I thank God I can hear. Oh God, I feel the presence. I said, tell somebody, I thank God I can hear. If I wasn't able to hear, I wouldn't be here today. If you wasn't able to hear, the enemy would have been taking you out. If you wasn't able to hear, you wouldn't have the victory in your soul, regardless of what's going on on the outside. Oh, yo, the power of being able to hear from the womb is a gift from God. I said it's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you for my salvation. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you for my salvation. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you for my salvation. And then it says here, I'm going somewhere with this. Touch somebody and say, am I asleep? Tell somebody, am I asleep? I'm going to help you with this. Am I asleep? It says here on the 10th day of the seventh month, the hemoglobin of the blood changes from that of the mother to a self-sustaining baby. And this is the day of atonement. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh my God. Oh my God, it become a self-sustaining baby, which this is the day of atonement. I said this is the day of atonement. This is the day of atonement, according to Leviticus 23 and 34. I want you to understand this. It says on the 15th day of the seventh month, the lungs become fully developed. If born before then, the baby would have had a difficult time of breathing. This is the feast of the tabernacle. And then eight days after the baby is born in Jewish customs, y'all come on, the baby is circumcised, which eight days after, after, listen, after the day of atonement, we celebrate Hanukkah. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that your life in your mother's womb was already set up to prosper. You was already already set up oh y'all to walk in freedom you was already set up to walk in deliverance so why are you asleep why am I asleep my God who was he preaching to why 
Why am I asleep? Why am I asleep? And watch this. How do I know that I am asleep? How do I know? The Song of Solomon said I fell asleep. Now why would I bring all of that information to you first? Because it says here, when a person falls asleep, they fall into a lack of reality where the natural eye cannot see reality on the outside neither can it see reality from the inside now what am I saying when I say that what am I saying when I say that now let me walk that thought out what am I saying when I say that when you when when you are asleep when you are asleep you lose your identity when you sleep you lose your identity no God's talking to everybody in this building He's talking to people around the world. You lose your identity when you sleep. And, and watch this. And you don't have a sense of reality of what is around you. Because you call in the enemy your friends. See, when you, listen, when you sleep, uh, other people can see stuff that you don't see. Because, because you're unconscious, you're blind to it. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing? The enemy has put on a disguise for you. And you cannot see. Because when you are spiritually asleep, your eyes cannot see the reality that's around you. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Y'all ain't saying, no, you cannot recognize danger. You cannot recognize when it's time to come to God. You cannot recognize when it's time to pray. You cannot recognize when it's time to fast. And you only can see it when trouble comes. But trouble sometimes comes to wake you up. No, to wake you up. To wake you up. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He's talking something right now. To wake you up. How do I know when I'm asleep? How do I know when I'm asleep? The second reason why I know when I'm asleep, watch this. Because I lose identity of who God is. That's why everybody is, <laughs> is scrambling and everybody is trying to connive and everybody is on a hustle and, 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 and watch this. And everybody doesn't watch this on a place where you're about to lose your faith in God. And we don't start walking by sight and not by faith because we are asleep. And when you are asleep, you lose your identity of who God is. You think God is a man. You think God is your friend. You forgot that God on the cattle on a thousand hills you forgot who God is because I'm asleep Lord Jesus because I'm asleep I'm asleep watch this this is a prophetic day I'm asleep I can't trust God because I'm asleep because I don't know who he is I'm asleep because I'm in spiritual exile. I'm asleep because God is of none effect to me. I'm asleep because I'd rather borrow the money from my auntie than to wait on God. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm asleep because I'd rather stay home rather than catch the bus to prayer. I'm not hearing y'all. This generation have no tenacity when it comes down to pressing into the presence of God because the devil have rocked the church to sleep. We sleep. I I'm not hearing y'all. We sleep. Because we think fashion shows is going to grow a church. I'm not hearing y'all. We sleep. We sleep because we think banquets is going to join make people join your church. But guess what they're doing? They join in an organization. They're not joining the presence of God because we sleep. And so now we have resided to all kinds of gimmicks and hoops and loops just to draw people so we can have a count. Because we sleep. Hold up, I say, Kevin Shandamaha. Head up, I see Kabaha. Head up, I'm a Koshe Kevin Shetty. Head up, I'm a Shandamaha. Head up, I see Kalamashaya. 
Because we sleep. Because we sleep. Jesus, we sleep. Lord, help me tonight. We sleep. We sleep. How do I know we sleep? Because the book of the book of Psalm 7, 74 and 9, watch this. It says that I know we sleep because we do not see our signs. Our signs. I got to take my time with that because we do not see our signs you are asleep because you do not see your signs and when you look that word up in the Hebrew the word signs the word signs mean two things let me give you the first definition the word signs means it says it is a supernatural wonders of divine providence which are hidden during exile in the guise of nature. In other words, when you are asleep, you don't understand that God is about to provide for you supernaturally that the providence of God is sitting in your spirit and all you got wake up and when you wake up God is going to show you a miracle who am I preaching to when you sleep when you sleep when you sleep when you sleep you scatter everything Lord Jesus help me tonight when you sleep you scared to go backwards and you scared to go forward God I'm preaching to somebody when you sleep God then gave you a vision. Man of God. God then gave you a vision. Woman of God. And you are afraid to walk in what God has said. Because the devil has rocked you to sleep. I'm not getting nobody to talk to me. And you need to understand that God tonight. He is going to wake you up. And he's going to show you that I'm right there. To give you a supernatural divine intervention in your circumstance. When you wake up, supernatural. I can't get nobody to say that. I can't even hardly get nobody in this audience to say it. Supernatural. I can't get nobody to say it. I said supernatural. Every time I say that, I feel something go all the way through me. Ha ha ha. Because somebody watching today, the Lord is bringing restoration to your spirit by the power of the supernatural divine providence of God. That means. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't saying nothing. Man of God, I feel this. Y'all ain't saying that. Supernatural providence. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Supernatural providence of God because I feel the Holy Ghost say, some of y'all, I'm going to have to bless you and knock you down for you to understand I'm still God. Some of y'all, God said, I'm getting ready to show you something. I'm getting ready to show you a mystery. You sitting in your house right now and you in a stupor because you said, I don't know where I'm going to get this from. But God is telling me to tell you, he's about to prove himself to you. He's about to show you that I'm God and there is no other one beside me. There's nobody before me. There's nobody coming after me. I'm God. I'm God. You're supernatural. Somebody better start saying that. Somebody better start saying that. Come on, supernatural. 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 I said supernatural. I said supernatural. I said supernatural. I said supernatural. Said supernatural. Said supernatural. Somebody shout. I said shout. I said shout. Supernatural. Wake up. Hold on, sit down. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, sit down. Sit down, I can't. Hold on, hold on, I'll show you. Stay with me. They say, they say you miss your sign. I'm talking to somebody. You miss the signs. And let me tell you what one of them means. The first one was supernatural providence of God. The supernatural divine. 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 Which means he don't need your best friend to do it for you. Lord Jesus, I wish I had somebody. Divine woman of God. Uh, meaning God going to do it without your connections. Uh, divine man of God. Uh, meaning God going to do it without your connections. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I get the Holy Ghost saying, uh, I'm looking for somebody to jump off the cliff and trust me. I'm looking for somebody to take a dive in faith. I'm looking for somebody to understand uh, that there is no failure in me. Head of Oshaya. And what I speak spoke to you. I'm going to bring it to pass. Uh, and no devil in hell uh, is going to be able to stop uh, what I'm about to do. Uh, and no weapon uh, that's formed against you. What I have spoken uh, shall come against you because I downloaded it in a place that the enemy can't touch it. Somebody better give God a shout in here. 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 Come on, come on. Give him a shout in here. Hey! Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I gotta bring this out. 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 Here I bash ya. So that I bash ya. How that I will hosha ya maha. Here that I see ya. Hoshala makasaya. Here that I will shaya. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Somebody give. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Somebody give him 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 a praise in this place. It says here, it says here, sit down, sit down. I don't want no singers, I just want her to pay attention. Sit down, sit down, we ain't finna sing. My God from Zion, my God from Zion, my God from Zion. My God, I feel that I hear the trumpet. I hear the trumpet. I don't care what you got to find over there, find me some trumpet. I hear horns. I hear God sounding an alarm. I hear God sounding an alarm. I hear God sounding an alarm to the nation. I hear God sounding an alarm to the world. I hear God sounding an alarm. And he's waking up the nation. And he's waking up prophets. And he's waking up preachers. And he's waking up teachers. And he's waking up intercessors. And he's waking up prayer warriors. He waking up mothers. He waking up fathers. He waking up teenagers. Somebody start shouting up. Wake me up. Wake me up! Wake me up! He said, he said, he said that one of the signs, one of the signs, one of the signs, uh, one of the meanings of the word signs is, is the letters of the alphabet. Now watch this. How does that relate to you? How does that relate to you? Because when you miss signs, you do not see letters, which means, which means, which means if the Lord is prophesying victory to you and you're not in the realm of the supernatural, I'm walking up on this camera because he's talking to somebody. When you do not live in the realm of the supernatural and the Lord began to speak to you, the Lord can give you the word victory. Are y'all hearing me? Or the Lord can give you the word peace. But if you miss in the E, you're going to think it means peace. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And that's why you don't have a belief system because you're not in a divine place. I'm not hearing y'all. You're not in a place of prayer. You're not in a place of consecration. So you missing letters. Uh, you missing the I out of victory. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. You missing the O out of the fact that God is wonderful. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You are missing the W out of the fact that God is powerful. I don't hear y'all talking. Uh, you are missing the U uh, out of the word supernatural because uh, the devil got you sleep. Wake up. Wait a minute. It says here, how do 
I know? How do I know when I'm sleeping? How do I know? Because I'm going to tell you why. Because when we don't seek God, listen, listen, this is a heavy word here. My God, oh my God, when we don't seek God for supernatural understanding, even this very day is prophetic. Now we could have said on the tenth, oh my God, we couldn't come. On the sixth, we couldn't be here. But let me help you with that one. The reason why we couldn't be here, because today is the 14th, and this is 2014, and there are 14 knuckles in a hand, and the reason why I know that this is the supernatural year of the Lord, because this is the year that the hand of the Lord shall help us. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I wish I had somebody in here that would just start praising God. This is the year that the hand of the Lord shall help us, and guess what? It's 2014, and today is the 14th. And it, oh y'all, uh, there's an agreement in the spirit. Uh, there's an alignment in the spirit, uh, which means uh, the hand of God uh, is swinging down uh, right now to those that believe it. Uh, just wake up! Just wake up! Oh y'all, 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 y'all! Somebody come on, give him a praise in this house. Somebody give him a praise in this house. Somebody give him a praise in this house. He waking you up. He waking up your anointing. He waking up your prayer life. He waking up your spirit. He waking up your mind. He waking up your heart. Hey! Somebody wake up! Somebody give God a shout. Oh. Wait. Wait. I gotta make this point. I gotta make this point. Somebody said, well, why I'm not woke? Well, what's happening? Because the Lord done prophesied this to me. Prophet said, I don't see it coming to pass. Well, let me explain this. And I got to take my time to explain this right here. I ain't got but a few minutes left. But I got to get this point in. The Bible lets us know that Elisha, Elisha was in the field. And Elisha, I'm really... God gave me divine instructions that tonight that I was to look into the camera more than I ever had since I've been coming to the Word Network because this is a word that's going to bring divine supernatural deliverance instantly. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He said this. He said, Elisha, wait a minute. He said, Elisha followed Elijah. And man of God and woman of God, I want you to hear me that's listening. Elisha followed Elijah. But when he found him, when Elijah found him, he was over in a field working. And he tossed him the mantle and he followed him for more than 26 years. He followed after the man of God and he said to him, oh, what do you want? And he said, when, I, when you go, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want y'all to hear this. He said, I want a double portion. So he was there when Elijah was taken up and the double portion fell. But let me tell you what happened to so many of us. After he got the mantle, the Bible said that the Shunammite, Shunammite woman, her son, he died. And what Elisha did when the woman came running for his help, when she came running for his prophetic help, he sent Gehazi with a staff in his hand. And he told Gehazi, he said, go and lay this on the face of the boy. And just so happened, Gehazi came back. He came back, Cantese, and he said, it didn't work. And Elisha was like, what do you mean it didn't work? And he said it didn't work. And God gave me a revelation for somebody that's watching because he gave me the same revelation. He said this. He said, Gehazi, first of all, Elisha should not have ever given him a staff because that wasn't his anointing. That was Moses' anointing. His anointing was the anointing of the mantle. And God said, somebody that's watching, you got to go back to your original anointing. You got to go back to the place that God called you. You got to go back to the thing that God called you to do. You over here baking cookies and God called you to prayer. You over here singing in the choir and God called you to noonday prayer. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You got to find your original 
no mantle. You got to find the thing that brought you the devil portion. You got to find the thing that spit the waters when you needed to cross over. You got to go back to the original plan of God. You got to go back to what God said, not what your friend said, not what your pastor friend said, not the advice that one of your friends gave you. But you got to go back and tell the Lord to take me back. Take me back to the original prophecy. Take me back to the original plan. Who am I preaching to? So we get off. We get off. We get off. And we go trying to make something work that God didn't give us. I wish I had somebody that's listening by television today. Head of our Sokasha. You go off doing stuff that God ain't told you to do. Because you look over in somebody else's ministry and you see that it's working for them. But that ain't your mantle. And you go, well, guess what? The second thing he gave me, Cantese, he said this. He said, and watch this. You got people that's trying to birth forth a prophecy of truth with a lying spirit. Gehazi was a lying spirit. I'm not hearing y'all. The reason why the staff didn't work too, because a lying spirit had it. Because when he left Naaman, and Elijah left Naaman, Elisha left Naaman, he went back and asked Naaman for the money. And not only did he take the money, but he lied about where he had been. But guess what? The lie didn't just come out of his mouth. The lie was in his spirit. And you will never be able to birth what God has prophesied in your spirit until God clean up your spirit out of a lying spirit. What is a lying spirit? A spirit that denies that God is supernatural. A spirit that denies that God is powerful. When you declare that God is anything less, hear that a shot out of when you declare that God is anything less than he said he is, you trying to operate by carrying a word of truth, but it will not come through a lying birth canal. Hallelujah. 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 It won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. So Elisha, he had to get up. Man of God, man of God, I'm talking to you. Man of God, woman of God, I'm talking to you. He had to get up. He had to get up and he had to go to that boy and he had to throw himself across him because that's what Elijah did. When the boy died, he threw himself across him. God is preaching something. Oh, God help me tonight. He threw himself across him. Elijah threw himself across him. Are you hearing what God is saying? Elisha threw himself across him. And just like many of us, I got to give you this word. We are sitting in the house of God and the baptism is falling. But we're like the boy that was sitting in the upper room after the Holy Ghost fell out. We sitting in the presence of God and we falling out of the window. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. You sitting in opportunity when the presence of the Lord is wooing your spirit but you falling out of the window. But I came to give you a word just like Paul said about the boy. There's still life in you. Somebody shout now. There is still life in you. I don't care what the devil have done. I don't care what the enemy is saying. I prophesy in your life, in your ministry, that there is still life in you. And he says, and he says, and that's the reason why somebody asks, well, why did you go back to 5 a.m. prayer? Because I had to go back to the original plan. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. 
I'm just so sick of everybody being all embarrassed because God correct you about something. I'm not hearing y'all. It's time for pride to die. The reason why somebody that's watching now, the reason why you can't come into the divine promise of God because you too worried about what somebody gonna say about you. You too worried about what they gonna think. No, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I don't care what I gotta give up. I don't care what I gotta shut down. I don't care who I gotta lose. I don't care what I gotta lose. But I cannot lose the anointing of God. I cannot lose the presence of the Father. I cannot lose my assignment. I cannot lose my ability to hear him call me by my name. I can't lose that. I can't lose that. You can't lose that. You can't lose that. I don't care if you're a bishop. You can't lose that. I don't care if you're a prophet. You can't lose that. I don't care if you're an evangelist. I don't care if you preach all over the world. I don't care. You can't lose that. You better not lose that. You better not lose the ability to hear God. So today, and so today, and so today, and so today, today is the 14th. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does the 14th mean? The 14th means that Leviticus 14 and 7, Leviticus 14 and 7, which is 7 twice, 14 and 7, this is the 14th day of 2014. Leviticus says, Watch this. It says, and he shall sprinkle the blood on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall produce him clean and shall let go the living bird into the air. What is he trying to say to you? Leviticus 14 and 7. Today is the 14th. This is the day that the Lord will heal your spiritual leprosy. This is the day that the Lord will heal all of the malfunctions in your ministry. I'm prophesying to somebody. This is the day that the Lord will restore your prayer life. This is the day that the Lord will restore your consecration life. This is the day that God will set your mind on high. This is the day that God will snap the flesh out of your spirit. This is the day that everything about you will come subject to the hand of God, to the power of God. And again, what does leprosy cause? Leprosy. Leprosy. The greatest part about leprosy is it affects the nerves. God, he's saying something right there. Can't tease, it affects the nerves. He said, I don't know why I keep calling your name. It affects the nerves. Man of God, he's giving you back your nerves. Oh, when it affects your nerves, you're too scared to move. When it affects your nerves, you shake at everything God says. When it affects your nerves, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. At the first sign of darkness, you start running and talking about giving up. But God said today, he go going to heal you of the spirit of leprosy. He's going to release the bird. He's going to sprinkle the blood from off of the altar on your life and you will never be the same at the tonight of Yabasha Hayabasha Kebisha Jamaha Hoshaka Masiya and that's why and that's why and that's why you sitting there you sitting there you sleep cause some of y'all saying well, I ain't getting no press y'all I ain't calling for no press, y'all, because you sleep. Because what you don't understand is God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. What you don't understand is this is something that God gave us. No, this ain't about the word network. This ain't about nobody selling no press, y'all, because you can't sell the anointing. What it's about is contact. What it's about is I'm coming in the covenant, and I'm judging and agreeing with what God is saying. And when my press, y'all, get to my house, everything that was Reached up over the pressure. That's the reason why God told me to tell them up to put the pressures in front of the word. Because as the word goes forth, everything that God is speaking up is getting into the fibers of the pressure.
show. How dare you say I don't have a hundred and fourteen dollars? How dare you say? How dare you count up when God is giving you a point of contact to come out of where you are? The Bible said, and God wrought special miracles by cloths. I'm not here, nobody talk to me. I had my cousin, my cousin, my cousin Jean told me, she said, last time you were on television, she said, I kept calling and I kept calling. She said, I stayed up all night and I called 66 times. She said, and I almost gave up, but I said, I can't, I can't give up because I got to be obedient to what God is saying. She said, I dialed 66 times and on the 67th time, when the lady answered the phone, I began to praise God. Some of y'all don't have enough tenacity to press your way into the presence of God. I don't care if the line is busy, I know what God is saying. Oh, y'all, Jesus, what you don't understand, let me tell you this, the anointing, the anointing, the it's on my life. It cost me everything. It cost me my father. It cost me my mother's health. It cost me a marriage. It cost me friends. It cost me everything I had. It cost me millions. It cost me my mind. I'm not giving you up. It cost me a peace of mind. It cost me everything. I wouldn't lie to you about a pressure because it took me too long to get what I got at a Pressure ain't worth losing it. No, no. If I said God said it, if I said God said go to the phone and pick up the phone and dial now, the numbers on the screen. I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost said. I'm telling you what God is saying. Hey, my God, I wish I had somebody in here to give God a praise uh, because I feel a breakthrough praise in here. 855 730 word. Pick up the phone now. 855 730 word. Hey! Time for a change. Hey! Time for deliverance. Hey! Time to wake up. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give him a shout. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said. He said. Wait a minute. He said. You going. Man of God. Woman of God. Oh my God. You going back to the original plan. See. What you don't understand. What you don't understand. God is calling the world to wake up. And if you don't wake up, he gonna wake you up. My God from Zion, I said if you don't wake up, he gonna wake you up. And he know how to wake you up. Cause he'll start drying up everything around you. I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. I get the Holy Ghost saying that. I never dare you to give God another yes. No, that just wasn't a message that I preached the last time I was here. That message was birthed out of my spirit. I never dare you to give God another yes. I never dare you to give God another yes. I never dare you to tell God, open my eyes, God. I want to wake up. I don't want to be sleep no more. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give him a shout right now. Oh, I show you. you need to pick up the phone now. 855-730 word. Because God is getting, I'm telling you, when the Lord began to birth this in me, and oh my God, I feel his presence. When God got ready to birth that in me, and he sent me back to 5 a.m. prayer, and he said every Sunday morning I want you to do 5 a.m. prayer he said the church you got shut it down I don't want it to be a church no more I want you to go to 5 a.m. prayer and I want you to stream it live listen I didn't care what nobody thought I didn't care nobody said oh she's shutting down her church I didn't care what nobody thought I had to get back into the divine plan that's the plan that he gave me that's what he called me into the earth where I'm gonna do he called me to pray he called me to be an intercessor I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me he called me to be a prophetic intercessor.
I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And I told the Lord, yes, Lord, whatever it takes, God, whatever you got to do, I need you to wake me up. I need you to wake me up. I need you to wake me up. And the first day that we went to prayer at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, the glory cloud fell like we have not experienced in years because God is talking to somebody about realigning yourself back up with the original assignment. With the original assignment. That's why he's talking to somebody and he's saying pick up the phone. They're saying well, I need a bind. I don't need you to get a pressure. Oh, be I shy ya. But God said it's a point of contact over what he just preached. You in this building, you looking around. Everybody that's watching my television, I'm telling you, God is talking to you. And God is bringing restoration. And that's why on Sunday mornings, if you want to stream live with us on jberadio.com, you can because I don't know about y'all, but I want God to wake me up. And I keep telling God, keep on shaking me out. Keep on shaking me out. Hold up, I told the Lord, one shake ain't enough. I told God calling me one time ain't enough. Keep on shaking me up until everything in me wake up. Until every assignment wake up. Until the anointing wake up. Until my mind wake up. Until my spirit wake up. Until my hands wake up. Until my feet wake up. Until my eyes wake up. Until my mouth wake up. Until my ears are able to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Hado Shakaba. He's saying, pick up the phone. I'm closing. 855 730 word. It's a point of contact. It's a point of contact. When I preach that message, another yes, Lord. Haba says. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. I just left Florida. Bishop Hellraise. And I went to preach as normal. And when I got there, the Lord said, don't walk out of this building. I want you to spend the night, three nights in this building. And I want you to lay on the altar. And I want you to pray. And the power of God fell like never before. Because the prophetic word that's coming across this screen today is God is looking for somebody that know you got a prophetic assignment on your life. And he's waiting for you to throw yourself across a situation. He's waiting for you to throw yourself across your relatives. He's waiting for you to throw yourself across your circumstance. He's waiting for you to wake up so that you can understand that the supernatural divine providence of God and the ability to see all the letters up because when you can see all the letters up then out of your mouth will come divine and prophetic things up then you would speak those things up which be not as though they were and while you are speaking up God will cause them to come to pass hey Shaya Masaya pick up the phone now 855730 word 855730 word and let me tell you something why are you calling you ask the operator how can I get a copy of that tape another yes Lord how do I get a copy of that tape another yes Lord because I had an experience that night that I have not had hey God took me up in the spirit when I fell across those pressures. When I opened my eyes, I didn't even realize I was on television. I went into a heavenly place. Hey, Shalaboshaya. My life ain't been the same since. Hey, Labashaya Maha. Because I gave him another yes, Lord. I gave him another yes, Lord. I gave him another yes, Lord. And when I gave him another yes, Lord, he woke me up. When I gave him another yes, Lord, he shook me up. When I gave him another yes, Lord, he shook my mind. He shook the fibers of my very soul and caused me to believe him among all. He caused me to trust him in a way that I've never trusted him before. I just felt led of the Holy Ghost to lay my hands on this camera screen. You watching by television, get up out of your bed. Walk yourself over to that TV and lay your hands on that television screen. 
I said walk over and touch that television screen up because when I lay my hands on top of it you lay your hands on top of mine and we are touching in agreeing that the power of God would come through the television that God would bring restoration in your mind when your hand touch mine I am praying that God will wake you up Bishop will wake you up Pastor will wake you up evangelist will wake you up prophet will wake you up prophetess will wake you up teacher and the body of Christ at large worldwide wake up wake up wake up wake up hold your basaka masaya hold your basaka masaya hold your basaka and it is so. And it is so. Pick up the phone now. 855 730 Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.